we are. We're right at the beach. Figured I'd make a little video, try and get an F-22 to pass over real quick. Um, so the good, bad, and the ugly. We're at, well, almost 26,000 miles now. I wanted to make this video at 25. Just haven't had the time. So uh, I guess the best things about this thing is uh, it's pretty freaking quick. And I haven't had another car that's been quicker than this. Um, still the fastest time I've had is 1118 at 124. And we're chasing down for that 10 second pass if you guys have been keeping up with the channel. Uh, I think just a set of slicks and a good uh, good surface away from a 10 on the street. Uh, lately I've been spinning a lot. So uh, even with these beefy uh, RT660s down to 23 PSI, they're still spinning off the launch. And this car dynoed 420 wheel and like 446 torque. That torque hits down low. So it makes sense why it's spinning. Uh, and that could be a good thing and a bad thing, but really all around, I'm loving this car. The engine bay is coming together slowly but surely. I was out uh, visiting uh, Dress Up Bolt's site today. I might change out a few things to spice it up, try and get it to match this bronze, which I love so much. And speaking of, this Cerakote is keeping the intake. I wish you guys could feel right now uh, how the intake feels versus like the charge pipe that's screaming hot. I like, guess this thing is actually pretty freaking warm. And uh, how well this turbo blanket's doing, surprisingly. I do want to get the PTP along with the, the DVD2 downpipe. This is the DVD2 intake as well. But uh, all the things on this car are great. There is a little bit of vibrations and sounds uh, starting to pop up now that the car has been really getting hammered on because of the engine mount and the trans mount. And you can't really see it down there with the Verkline subframe. We got tubular subframes front and rear uh, with a really sturdy dog bone puck in there. The, the bracing and everything is giving me sort of a uh, little vibrations here and there, especially when it's colder out because plastics are more brittle. But the main sound I get is probably my number one complaint with this car. We'll hop in to get away from the wind. Is this guy right here will vibrate. It sits down when this uh, cover comes up, but this edge over here, like vibrates ever so slightly and it makes the most terrible sound. And it took me forever to figure out where it was coming from. I thought it was coming from in the dash. I thought it was coming from inside here. So I took this apart and added in some like cloth to try and get it to stop vibrating. But it was actually coming from here. Now, mind you, you're like, why are you looking down here if it came from up here? Guys, my hearing is so bad. I've been working on aircraft for years. Now I work on generators and they're just as bad. So, um, with having added all that stiffness, this does vibrate from time to time. And I can open up the shade and kind of just place my fingers on it and just a little, I mean, you can just feel, if you barely hold a finger on there, you can feel it vibrate and making the noise. So I just kind of put my hand on it, but I need to get like a little wedge or figure out if I can like adjust how, because if, if this had a little bit more pressure going up, it wouldn't vibrate because this side doesn't do it. It's just this side of it, which is interesting to me. One of my other complaints, which is also something else self-induced, this, actually both of these paddles have flown off. They're just glued to the little square that plugs into the uh, the steering wheel. So, uh, yeah, I mean, they're cheap trying to bull crap, but I was downshifting one day and bloop, the whole thing fell off. And it wasn't about a week later, same thing happened to this one. I super glued this side. I did a pretty good job. It hasn't fallen off yet, but this side, I did a little bit too much super glue and look at that. It bothers me to see it. it. It's embarrassing to even show it, honestly. I probably could get in there and scrape it. You don't really see it because it's like usually like shaded kind of. Like you don't really notice it. But once I've been bugging BFI, uh, Black Forest Industries, they're coming out with, oh, well, they already have them out for the Mark 7. They have a real nice billet paddle and their little BFI logo lights up. Like it uses the LED that's already built in there and it lights up on the paddle. So once those are available for this type steering wheel, I'm going to grab it, but uh, those are probably my biggest complaints. A couple rattles, and uh, of course, these paddles won't. Everything that's, that is bad about the car is uh, self-induced. Another thing is the paint. The paint is not great. Everybody knows that. The paint on these are just terrible. They really cheaped out on the paint in the last 10 years or so. I don't even know if they've ever been known for paint, but I swear my Mark IV had way less uh, paint chips, rock chips, than uh, the new stuff, but... You guys know I hated the, the steering wheel that came with the car. So this was one of the first things I did. And it makes the interior just so much better. I've been looking to change out this because I, I don't really like 
how easily this scratches and just the way the you guys see like the dirt reflects off it. it just does because i'm always having I always have a window open no matter how cold it is kind of do there's like a couple different shifters i've been thinking about buying but no one else has gotten them so i don't want to buy it and it not fit so i'm kind of waiting on somebody else to make. sound system in here is great the b and o um some people complain about it and here again are my my settings for it you kind of got to do like some weird stuff um where is it oh yeah you got to set the focus to rear and then uh it sounds a lot different it doesn't let me do it right now because i don't have music playing it's because my phone's connected and we're recording but um yeah that right there and then surround level up a little bit something yeah 3d effect low um and that's just for your braking but speaking of this i've only had this kind of like bug out on me once and uh, I just held the power button down there and it reset. It's been fine. Nothing like the Mark 8s when they have tons of, of infotainment and sensor issues. Sometimes I do, like in the mornings, I think it's because of condensation, honestly. It'll say, like, it can't view things to the, to the sides of me, like the parking sensors. But, like, as soon as I get out of the driveway and drive, like, two feet, it goes away. And it's fine for, like, the rest of the day. It's only some days. And I, th I really do think it's because of condensation. But... That's that. That's probably it for the ugly. And like I said, the great stuff is like with the power. Like I've, I have like, what, maybe four or 5,000 miles on this oil change. I've been using just a regular liquid molly. And this last change, I used their uh, Ceratac. And my oil is still like golden brown. Just this car. And I beat the crap out of this car. Actually, today I just ordered uh, transmission service stuff. So we'll be doing that soon. I still have my back seats out from when I was doing my runs this weekend. I'm going back out this weekend, so I just left them out for now. It's a pretty simple job. There's just there's a bracket that goes in front of a plastic bracket pulls off, then there's a metal bracket under it. You take out this T30, and it then you can take off the bracket and that holds the middle of the seats, and then you just kind of like lift them and slide them off these posts. It's really easy. The, the bottom seat you just pop it up. Some you got like little pieces that pop on this. You just got to kind of like push the little bracket back, and they they pop off really simple to do uh what else the charging is great i love it i run a charger up to the side and i have velcro on it so it just kind of like sits down there i don't use a wireless charger because it sucks it just makes your phone hot um, kind of do wish i had the rs lights where it did the animation but it's whatever if the car was off i'd show you guys you can just kick under this the trunk opens i love that this race line it's everything about this car i really really like besides the, uh, the cheap paint the car is ultra dirty I figured I'd show you guys this is how she sits in her natural habitat uh, usually dirty <laughs> I drive the car a lot you know and living near the coast it just it rains on and off like all the time so never really truly have a clean car but it is what it is I just love the way this car looks though like the styling and everything about this car is just so lovely Close this baby up. Race? Oh, Subaru? Bro, you get gapped. Super gapped. Get out of here, bro. Anyway, I tried to race an Evo on the way in. He didn't want the sauce. Evo 10. God, I just love the way this thing looks. Oh, another thing that I don't like is these fake ass vents. I'm going to. Cause I, I go to, to come in school in June, so I'm gonna pop this one off and the rear back too, and I'm gonna get a hold of CJM Industries. I wanna try and send him these vents to see if he can somehow scan them and like 3D print ones that actually have functional vents on them. And that way, for the back, like your uh, your bumper cover here kind of acts as a parachute, so air gets trapped up in the back of the bumper. So if these were open, I feel like it would let air through and you'd be a little bit more aerodynamic, but you're gonna see like whatever crap is behind it. But I figured if I just pull the bumper cover off and either cut whatever a little metal or just like spray paint it black so you don't really see a whole lot behind it, that it would actually, it wouldn't look as bad because then they wouldn't be fake. And then that front one, um, it's covered because there's nothing behind it. Most cars get a trans cooler uh, for some reason, the S3s got gypped out of a trans cooler. So eventually, I'm going to retrofit like a racing line oil cooler as a uh, trans cooler or just something else. 
some other brand uh, to do that. We're definitely going to need a trans cooler. In March, or not March, May, we're trying to go and hit up uh, Virginia International Raceway, VIR, with a bunch of the Volkswagen guys around here. And I think that right there is probably going to be one of my biggest downfalls. Hopefully P3 has a gauge out by then so we can see trans temp, which leads me to another thing I don't like about this car. The only temperature you can see on the dash is oil temp. That's it. You don't get coolant. You don't get trans. You don't get nothing. Just oil and the outside air temp. So, like, for me to see trans temp, I either have to uh, plug in OBD11, bring it up on my phone, go to gauges, do all these steps just to get trans temp. Or, you know, once P3 gauges has their gauges out for these cars, you can just cycle through, see trans temp, see boost, see EGT, see ethanol content, RPM, just all types of things. So I, it's another reason I keep, I keep bugging P3. Literally every month I send them a message asking them what the updates are. They said, as of last week, this is like the end of March, they said they are two cars, there's two cars in front of the S3. So hopefully it won't be too, too much longer, but oh, that's something I really want to see. I just love the way, like I got the tent, my car is so filthy, I'm sorry. I love the way the seats look through the front window. Just, there's so many things I love about this car. I would like to wrap it eventually. I do really like darker color. I'm not really, really much of a white kind of guy, but uh, when my wheels are clean <laughs> up against the white, the bronze looks really, really nice. And like how I'm color matching all the bronze stuff in the bay with the wheels. When the car is like detailed and like, I know at some point we'll be going to shows and stuff. It'll match up right now. I think people will really think that. I kind of want to change out. I want to get like custom 034 and like racing line and fork line stickers all cut to bronze and have like a couple of like my racing line, fork line, 034, maybe another one right here or some sort. Uh, DBV2 maybe even. Get like a whole like sheet of like my top supporting brands on the car and get them all cut to this bronze color. I'm really obsessed with it if you guys can't tell. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's all I got. Good, bad, the ugly. Ain't a whole lot to it. It's still young, 26,000 miles almost. Uh, just keeping up with maintenance. She's been great. Never really a hiccup. The trans doesn't like when I race on this one bumpy road. It'll kind of shift funny sometimes. And, uh, you know, random infotainment issues when it, or not infotainment, sorry, uh, parking sensor issues whenever it's a little misty out in the morning. But uh, other than that, it's been great. It's been seriously great. I'm so glad I bought this car, even more so now that, uh, you know, she's almost a 10 second car on 93 octane, like a 10 second four cylinder on 93 octane tune. Now, mind you guys, I do put it in a little bit of E85, but yeah, there's no software changes to accommodate for that. I do that just for a peace of mind on my end to help with not control of, you know, heat and things. But, uh, yeah, I just freaking especially when you stand back like this and you really get to see the curves, especially on the hood. I love, like there's this one angle. I think it's about right, about right here, especially when the roof goes, the roof kind of throws it off, but like you can see the wideness of the rear end. God, I just love it. And I actually, I did order a Maxton, uh, whatchamacallit here, trunk spoiler. But they're like pre-production, pre-order, some pre-bullshit. So who knows when that shows up. But when that comes, it's in black. I'll also black these reflectors out to see how that flows along with everything. But I don't know if we'll keep it or not. I might go back to red. Who knows? Anyway, go back to look at this angle. Golly. I'll throw up some pictures in here, recent pictures from Sean and myself. I just love this thing. One last thing I wanted to show you guys. Oh, I did hit 26,000 today. Huh. There's my, my gas mileage over almost 26,000 miles there. Not too bad. On the highway on this thing, I still get about, uh, what, like 34 miles a gallon if I put it in comfort and just chill. So that's my bad girl. I love this car. Anyway. You guys have any questions, comments, concerns, uh, feel free to drop them in the comments. Let me know. We got a uh, few big things that I want to get knocked out soon. A huge front mount intercooler from DBV2. 
the stage three racing line brakes and uh we definitely need some coil overs because my strut mounts are shot if you give it a listen yeah ever since i put on those euro code uh that camber kit it destroyed my camber my my tops on the on the struts so coil over soon for sure So close. 